trying to anticipate and has banged against the post and Alistair Lord has kicked two goals too. Well, Geelong are 15-19 to 8-11 and I think at half time, at three quarter time Geelong led only by 10 points. Now the lead is 50 points. A fantastic last quarter by Geelong to uh, get well away. There's the kick out by Phil Hay. Polinelli sets himself, receives a push. Now's a chance for Cam McPherson. He gets the ball, plays out along the centre wing position. There's a Hawthorne player down and we see the ball go to Rod Olsen. It looks like Nelda. Nelda is on the ground. Or is it Gary Young? Gary Young, it would be number 31. Up towards the half-forward line, and we see Watts again as he falls over in the back pocket, and that was his 10th mark. Fantastic last half by Watts because he's marked everything that has come his way. Crouch is telling the uh, players to clear away to give Watts a chance. Here is Watts now, back over in the half-back line. Geelong well in command of the game. A poor kick coming out towards Polinelli. They're trying to play to Polinelli, I think. They bring him into the game. Stead Hay is over the line, and the ball will be thrown in. Three minutes of time on in the final quarter of the grand final. Geelong, as Ian has just mentioned, with a game well and truly in their keeping. 31 free kicks to Hawthorne, 27 to Geelong, 38 marks to Hawthorne, 53 to Geelong, and here comes Geelong again, if Ponelli can get it, he does so, he receives a push, and knock the photographer flying on the boundary line, and there's a chance now for uh, Gary Young, the ball is over the line this time and out of bounds, well the cameraman has picked up his camera, he's very lucky to have it in one piece, and there's uh, another famous photographer, Lloyd Brown, having a shot of his co-mate. There's the throw in on the half-forward line for Geelong. Farmer knocks the ball down. A chance here for Hawthorne to clear. It's Stead Hay who taps it out. And uh, coming off the ground is a Hawthorne player who looks pretty badly hurt. I think it is Darkie Nolder. Here's Geelong again with another score coming up from Sharrick. A left foot hit by Sharrick, but it's out of bounds. And there's Darkie Nolder. He looks to be pretty badly hurt, and he's getting plenty of attention from the trainers as he is off the ground. Nolder wasn't uh, hurt by an opponent. He went for a mark and fell down heavily and I think struck his head. And uh, as you can saw then, he looks to be uh, in a pretty bad way. Let's hope that he's okay. He looks bad, Don. He looks to be out. Bad luck in the last dying minutes of the game that this should happen, but let's hope, as we've said, that Nolder is okay. In the meantime, the ball is out of bounds in the Geelong forward pocket. Geelong coasting home to a win in this grand final. Here's Lyon trying to pick it up. He's come onto the ground to replace Nolder. That's Yates with the ball, number 40. Gary Young has it. Quick pass it out to Stead Hay. Stead Hay is on the half-back line. Sends it up to the centre wing position. And coming in to take it is Stuart Law. Stuart Law has the ball on the half-forward line for Geelong. Polly Farmer setting himself for a short one, but he's telling Lord to kick it ahead of him, well over his head. Polly Farmer playing his 200th game of league football in a premiership match. How lucky can you be? The ball is on the half-forward line for Geelong, knocked away by Gary Young, coming through strongly now as Goggin. He runs into trouble. Gets away with it. Yuren dodges cleverly around a Geelong player. That was Routley. Gets up towards the half-forward line. There's nobody home. Leading in the race for the ball is Scott coming through strong to his Peck. Peck has the ball on the ground. If he can pick it up, he does so. Tries a short pass up towards Ian Law in the forward pocket. But there's John Devine and backing him up well as Goodland, who has played very well for Geelong when he replaced Viner at half-time. He ran into a little bit of trouble then, though. Run into a bit of trouble then, he's going to receive a free kick. Well, his and pick Roy West, Roy West uh, Ian having a tussle, Ian Law comes in. This is unnecessary because the game's almost over. I think that was with Peck again, Don. Peck and Roy West haven't been the best of friends all day. Anyway, it's a uh, free kick to Goodland in the back pocket in the dying stages of this 63 grand final. Geelong have got it sewn up. Goodland drop kicked it up towards the centre wing position, setting himself. And uh, marking it quite well is uh, Olsen. He plays on now, kicks up towards the centre half forward position. Here it comes up towards uh, West and also Devine coming through strongly is uh, Arthur. Gives it across to Ure Law. Law punches it as the chance for Hawthorne. It's picked up by Elvis and a right foot snap, but oh, he's coming well away from the goals and it's one point. Hawthorne are eight goals, 12, trailing Geelong 15 19. Well, a kickoff coming up in the final uh, passage of play. Uh, from the Geelong fullback Roy West. This uh, is a certain win to Geelong, who are just coasting home 109 to 60. Hawthorne have put up a magnificent performance. They're still fighting hard, but Geelong too good on the day. There's the kickoff, a chance for Lyon. Alistair orders there, and there's the siren. And look at the elated Geelong camp. There's Bob Davis being congratulated by other Geelong officials.